Well then, the Under-17 World Cup wrapped up last week with host Brazil reigning supreme after some 90th minute drama against Mexico in the final. A nail-biting 2-1 victory saw the Seleção get their hands on their fourth Under-17 World Cup, celebrating their successes with the future stars of tomorrow. Consistently dominating the tournament in their own backyard, knocking out heavyweights like France and Italy in the process, might I add, they were deserved winners at the end of the day. Considering none of their Under-17 stars stars are in FIFA 20 or any football game for that matter. We've recreated a few of their top performers at the World Cup in FIFA 20. We've placed them into one team to see how they'd perform in a few seasons, grow and develop, whilst also providing us with slight insight on how they'd look in the future once they'd eventually get added into FIFA. I'm hoping some major January transfer moves are on the horizons for these lads so they eventually get added into FIFA in some major squad updates coming soon. If you're looking to keep up to date with all the latest scores, news, transfers and everything the footballing world has to offer, make sure to check out OneFootball. It's available on both iOS and Android. It allows you to follow your favourite teams, your favourite players and so much more. The download link is in the description so make sure to give it a go. It's completely free. It is a must-have app for every football fanatic. As for now though, we've got our recreated Wonder Kids. We tried to do the best we can. We tried to make it look like and be as accurate as possible to real life. And when it comes down to it, we've got to have the four-time World Cup champs in the game. The under-17 Wonder Kids. They're the next big World Cup prospects in world football. And I might be doing a bit of a similar video with the France team, considering they have so many of their under-17 Wonder Kids in FIFA 20. If only they won, it would have been so much simpler. But today, we're here getting to know the next future stars in Brazil. This is how we are currently lining up here. Of course, we've picked Forest Green Rovers. I don't really know why. They're just, you know, they've got a cool little jersey. It's green and black. Kind of looks a bit similar to Brazil. Not really, but I guess they're just a decent fit. They start in the fourth division. These Wonder Kids can grow, gel into the squad and really form something special here. Maybe climb the ranks and maybe even achieve some silverware and greatness here with this side. Considering there is no under-17 Brazilian Wonder Kids whatsoever in FIFA, We've had to include this Brazilian one to get. I've just included him in here. He's 18 years of age. He's Brazil. 65 overall. And he's just going to be helping out in goal for now. Here's a bit of a more close-up, in-depth look at all the one kids. Of course, we've created them. We've selected the special eight. These were their top performers throughout the whole entire tournament. We've got Caio Jorge. Caio Jorge, the center forward, 17 years old. He has potential to be special. And he's going to start off at 70. He is our main man going forward at 70 overall. It's got pretty decent stats. We've had to guesstimate. We haven't got too much to go off here, so we're just going to have to try and guesstimate their stats. I've tried to include their accurate heights and weights and birthdays and all that stuff. Most of these players are under six foot because they're teenagers, but Caio Jorge is a Quick little nifty center forward, I think can bag a lot of goals alongside Peglo. Another one kid that has potential to be special. He will be the strike partner for George up top 70 overall yet again. Another center forward slash striker that could really cause some damage for us. Five foot six, so he's quite small. We don't have the physical or height advantage in this squad or with these players whatsoever. And we'll move on to the center attack and midfielder. One of the brightest midfield prospects throughout this whole tournament. He did score a few goals in the tournament as well. The number 20, Lazaro. Like I said, in this tournament, there were quite strict regulations. They couldn't have any other players over the age of 17. They have to be 17 and under, unlike in some other tournaments. The number 20 will be our main playmaker, one of the most creative players in this squad, one of the tallest players in this squad at 5 foot 9, 4 star skill moves, 4 star weak foot, Pretty consistent stats besides defending, but Lazaro is showing great potential at the moment and could really be a hot prospect in this side. Daniel Cabral is another midfielder, however, is more of a central defensive midfielder, more of a midfield type pivot player. I would kind of compare him to the Casemiro type of player, 17 years of age, yet again has potential to be special. These wonder kids are showing some promising signs at the moment, 69 overall. We've tried to keep their stats as balanced as possible here, four star skill moves three star weak foot for the lad he's got brilliant stamina he's got brilliant strength and the aggression is in tip-top shape as well so the number five is going to be a bulldog in that midfield no signs are given up for this lad he is the classic cdm that'll do the dirty work and break up the opposition attacks there is a lot of attack and prowess in this squad and not much defense going on at the moment however we move on to one of our few defenders is yan kuto the right back is 17, of course, 69 overall. Was one 
one of their main defensive sparks in the tournament, and most of these guys do play in Brazil, and that's why they're not in FIFA 20 whatsoever. Four star skill moves and four star weak foot. At six foot tall, he's probably one of the tallest players out of these wonder kids. We'll move on to his stats. So more consistency going on in the sprint speed, stamina, strength as well. Some of the top clubs in Europe should be looking at these prospects because they could be one of the next big things in world football. Some of the world's best come out of South America, especially Brazil, and this one could be another one. Gabriel Veron was one of the younger wonder kids in this squad at 16 years of age. He can play it on the right hand side. That's his specialty. He's a right winger and a right midfielder. 16 years old and has potential to be special at 68 overall. Four star skill moves and three star weak foot was another pivotal and influential player in Brazil's World Cup campaign here. His main stats are acceleration, agility and sprint speed in the light greens. Dribbling is also one of his main strengths. He specializes in going forward and attacking going, running at the defense. Our penultimate under 17 Brazilian wonder kid is another slightly younger player here at 16 years of age. He has potential to be special. One of the only wonder kids that was born in 2003 in this batch. 68 overall, he has potential to be special and is a left back over here. We'll take a look at his stats. Four star skill moves, three star weak foot. He's five foot 10 and medium, medium work rates. The stamina and agility are his main highlights. He focuses more on defending, but can push forward when need be. Slide tackling and stand tackling are up to par as well and the dribbling and crossing are some of his main benefits right now But he could be one of those players who really gets forward and is quite agile He's quite the lanky skinny figure at the moment the number six as we move on to our final player He's our final secret weapon. He's the wild card in this one. It is a Tales Magno Tales Magno, Tales Magno, got no idea He is a striker and he's probably one of the most versatile players throughout these under 17 wonder kids He can play a striker. He can play a left wing and he can play at right wing pretty much anywhere along the front three this man can do the job yet again one of the more lower rated players in this squad at 66 overall but don't discredit him because he has got some wonderful stats as well he's one of the tallest players in this team at six foot one he can provide us with a bit of physicality a bit of height four star skill moves four star weak foot and his stats are still pretty consistent pretty decent his ball control is the only light green there at 71 and a lot of growth and a lot of development can be done for these brazilians here in england I think Forest Green Rovers is the perfect breeding ground and the right development center and club that could really raise these Brazilian wonder kids to the next level. They've done it on the world stage at the World Cup. They've done it in Brazil, but can they do it? as a team in a club season. We're going to have to find out in this simulation. It's going to be an interesting one. So if you guys do go ahead and enjoy the video, make sure to drop a like down below. Hit subscribe as we are aiming for 50,000 subscribers before the end of the year. Follow me on Twitter. The link is in the description. And also comment down below. Who is your favorite under 17 wonder kid who was at the World Cup tournament as well? Nevertheless, I'll see you at the end of season one. And at the end of season one, the growth is already off the chart here with our highest rated player at the club right now, Jan Kuto, the right back. I was propping him up earlier in the video and he's starting to show he's worthy with a plus seven overall increase. We'll take a look at his stats this season. He played 56 games, 13 goals from right back and four assists. So he is like the young Roberto Carlos right now. I'm not going to put that pressure on you mate considering Roberto Carlos was a left back but you know you get my gist right now. We'll look at his attributes this year and you can see the physicals going up. Mentals as well. All the technicals are receiving boosts at the moment. Some massive increases you can see there. Penalties now his specialty. Now 18 years of age with a little plus 5 to his overall. The goal scorer banged 20 goals in. 11 assists as well. Double figures in both goals and assists in 55 appearances there. And as you can see the stats slow Slowly and steadily increasing there. Some more dark greens, some more light greens propping up. And the valuation stands at 13.5 million pounds, a 285% increase. And now Pelio, the 18-year-old, the striker duo. Let's see how they did together. And on first glance, it seems to be a formula to success at the moment. 48 appearances for him, 21 goals and 13 assists. Double figures in both goals and assists. We'll take a look at his both physical and mental stats. They're all going up besides composure. And now his main stat at finishing 82. So he's looking to be deadly in front of goal. 
Valued at 13.5 million pounds, a 264% increase. And now Gabriel Veron, the tricky little right winger. He grew plus seven this season as well with 15 goals and eight assists, 48 appearances, both a provider and a goal scorer. And as you can tell, the acceleration and the agility are both his main stats at the dark green. Sprint speed also now at an 80, 85 acceleration. You can kind of tell what kind of player he's developing into right now. But it was a 550% increase upon his valuation at 13 million pounds now Daniel Cabral let's just say he's the Casemiro region with a plus six to his overall he got 48 appearances nine goals and six assists from CDM attributes wise this guy offers some insane consistency along the physicals and mental stamina and strength are both really nicely balanced and his main stat at 82 is short passing so I guess he is a little playmaker a deep line playmaker valued at 13 million pounds and now Lazaro the main playmaker he's been transfer list that I don't know why. He's not having a nice time at the moment. Only getting 29 games in there. Three goals or one assist. So this is the first real disappointment so far. With a plus five increase to his overall, he now stands at 74. He could have done a bit better. We'll take a look at his physical and mentals. And they are going up here and there. No dark greens for Lazaro as of yet. And now we move on to Patrick. Plus four, one of the lesser growers in this squad at 72 overall. He got 19 games in there with two assists in there as well. And then his stats, like I said, they've increased. But no dark greens to show for as of yet. Valued at 5.5 million. And then Tales Magno, the little wild card we've added in here. The versatile little attacker went up a plus four in terms of overall. Did quite well in there with 12 goals and two assists. 35 appearances. Appearances, and then we'll take a look at his stats. Nothing really popping out as of yet, but we'll take a look at his valuation. He's one of the least valued players in this team, 3.5 million pounds. They also found some success in League 2, finishing in second, getting promoted to the third division there with 107 points, automatic promotion. A lot to look forward to, a lot to achieve, and we're only in season one so far. This under-17 Brazil squad has the potential to take over England and become the next future stars of the Premier League. So let's see what Forest Green Rovers have in store for us in Season 2. And the Brazilians are taking it to the next level here at Forest Green after back-to-back -back promotions that were invincible in the third division, 122 points. And this is set up to be one of the greatest teams of all time. And Season 2 saw Pelio, our consistent source of goals at the moment, 38 goals for him. He bagged the top goal scorer award alongside 13 assists, double figures in both. Another player who got double figures in both goals and assists, it was Kao. Jorge with 27 goals and 11 assists as well. Nothing to be scoffed at. And Gabriel Veron proven to be a handful down that right hand side. 20 goals and 14 assists. Jan Kuto what is this guy from right back? He's an absolute machine. A monster, a freak of nature, whatever you want to call him. 18 goals and 8 assists from right back is absolutely unheard of. Lazaro seems to have gotten his act together and started to play a bit more games and started to get in a few more goals. 14 goals, 9 assists. Daniel Cabral from CDM getting 10 goals and 6 assists. And then Teles Magno in there with 7 goals. We also had the left back Patrick with 56 appearances, 3 goals and 1 assist. We'll take a look at the biggest growers and as you can see, it was a plus seven again that has been the highest throughout Veron and Pelio both recipients of that and plus sixes all around pretty much a plus five to Daniel Cabral and then Jan Kuto even though he got 18 goals he only grew a plus four but the stats continue to go up it is all looking pretty nice and dandy as we head into the third season in the championship Forest Green Rovers have had a Brazilian injection of youth and has proven to do a world of good at the moment. Let's see how the Young Guns do in their third season together, their first season in the second division. It's going to be an absolute madness in the championship. And here we are at the end of season three. The second division treated us nicely here. It was our first season without 100 points. We're not used to that, but we're one point away at 99, finishing in fourth. Cardiff and Sheffield United both getting automatically promoted and it seemed that we got ourselves into a little play playoff final at Wembley. Forest Green Rovers taking on Huddersfield Town for a spot in the Premier League, one of the most lucrative games in the footballing calendar, and it's all going down here in London. The Brazilians are in their first major final, and it looks like we're on good form at the moment. We've got Veron winning the Player of the Month award right here. We've got the Manager of the Month also going to Sir BCHD, so a lot of things are going our way, and we also have so many players nominated for the Player of the Month. So let's hope it translates into form here at Wembley. 
It's all or nothing, let's go. Huddersfield, they've done it here before, but can the Brazilians show their worth? And it's a 2-0 victory, both Veron and Jorge getting on the score sheet there. It was a comfortable victory, one goal in the first half, one goal in the second, and it was Pelio off with a nasty injury, but it doesn't matter, we're partying into the night because we are Premier League. And these were the stats that shaped our season, these were the key influences that got us that promotion, and after that playoff final goal, it is Gabriel Veron finishing our top goal scorer now with a plus six, he is at 88, 14 assists in there as well. Pelio picked up a bit of an injury there, but with 29 goals and 13 assists, that is an absolutely brilliant achievement there, it was Kaio Jorge, another player who scored in the playoff final, 22 goals and 7 assists. Jan Kuto from right back, yet again, 9 goals and 5 assists. Lazaro, the playmaker, 9 goals and 6 assists. Daniel Cabral as well with 5 goals and 4. We'll move down to Tales Magno over here with 4 goals and 5 assists. I think that is pretty much it. No, Patrick in there with 3 assists. Growing kind of steadily. He's probably the slowest grower out of the lot. Our main goals and performers were, of course, Veron with a plus 6. Pelio and Magno in there as well with plus sixes and then the plus fives go to Cabral and Jorge and then the plus fours in there alongside a plus three. Amazing amount of growth achieved and I think now they are Premier League ready. They're starting to get into that world-class territory especially Gabriel Veron and I think that could really cause some damage in the top division of English football. It's a new era, it's a new day. Forest Green Rovers will be making their Premier League debut with these under 17 Brazilian wonder kids and this is going to be fiery. And the Premier League season has come to a halt here and the Brazilians, they've managed to survive. They finished in like the mid-table positioning, kind of lower to end of the table. In 13th with 43 points, they avoided the drop zone by a comfortable margin. And we'll take a look at the top. It is Man City, Liverpool, Chelsea and Arsenal in the top four. That is where we're aiming, at least for next season. I was expecting a relegation dogfight, but they've managed to pull through, which is quite nice. We'll take a look at the FA Cup and it was a round five elimination to Chelsea. And in the Carabao Cup, we stood no chance. We got eliminated by Bournemouth 4-3 on penalties. No sign of European football as of yet, but we'll take a look at the top performers here in the Premier League, and it is not the kind of stats that we're used to seeing at the moment. Caio Jorge being the top goal scorer only with 11 goals and 5 assists. You'd think now that they're getting better, you'd start to see the stats increase. However, the level of opposition has just increased massively. Lazaro in there with 9 goals and 4 assists. Gabriel Veron also getting 8 goals and 9. Tales Magno in there with 7 goals and 2 assists. Pelio now with 6 goals. And then Jan Kuto from right back, of course. 3 goals and 2 assists for him. Patrick as well with 2 goals and 2. It looks like Daniel Cabral picked up a big nasty injury there. Only 1 goal and 1 assist to show for this season. Growth also took a bit of a hit, but was still evident in here with Manio being the best grower in there with a plus five. Veron, Jorge, and Pelio in there with plus four. Plus three is awarded to Patrick. Kuuto and Cabral and Lazaro with a plus two. It's pretty much picture perfect going up front, but the more you backtrack into the squad, the two centre backs and the goalkeeper aren't really doing us any favours, but we're still going to aim high. European football is the aim for next season. Well, it's the second season in the Premier League right here. Five seasons deep, but I think that is Champions League, not Champions League, Europa League qualification. We qualified for Europe nonetheless. It was Spurs just ahead of us by three points. We're just outside the top four. There is a high barrier to entry there. It was the 90 plus club only there with Arsenal in fourth position. Man City finished out top of the league on 101 points. A league finish came at a sacrifice to our other cup competitions. We came so close in the FA Cup getting eliminated in round six to Everton. Also in the Carabao Cup, we reached the quarterfinals and got eliminated 3-1 to Liverpool. And here are our main performers this season. It is Gabriel Veron again emerging to be one of the main stars out of this squad. 27 goals and nine assists for him. It was double figures in both goals and assists for the strike duo Pelio and Caio Jorge with 20 goals and 10 assists, 22 and 14 for Pelio as well. Lazaro now the playmaker. Still, I expected a bit more from him, to be honest. He was one of the main stars in the Under-17 World Cup. Eight goles and two assists for him. Tellez Magno with seven goals and three. And Jan Kuto also showing up with five goals and two assists from left back. Daniel Cabral, a much improved season upon last year with five goals and four assists. And then Patrick in there 
with one goal and one assist. Most of the growth this season in terms of overall saw a lot of the players, pretty much most of the players enter the 90s besides Patrick in there, but most of our players are now developing into world-class talents at the moment. The goalkeeper and defense obviously aren't up to that standard, but Brazil are most known for their attacking and the flair type players that they can produce. And I believe this is a prime example of it. our highest rated player is Pelio in there with that 96 overall. Varon is coming up close with 95. And I think that is a team that can compete or even go all the way in the Europa League. Season six has arrived and it's bigger and better than ever as the Wonder Kids have gone on to represent the senior team and they've only gone and won the 2024 Copa America. They won it against Argentina and guess who's there next to the manager in the press conference room right besides that beautiful trophy. It is Pelio. They actually won it quite convincingly too. 3-0 over Argentina. And here we are. The end of season six has dawned upon us and let me just tell you that we got a massive finale coming up here. It's the most successful season yet. They're runners up in the Premier League. Qualifying for the Champions League next season. 93 Three points was the winning total for Liverpool. They were just two points behind, but what a season for the under-17 Brazilians doing their job in the Prem. And here we are, Wembley has come calling. We get a little spot in the FA Cup final up against Manchester United. We pretty much powered our way through here, eliminating Man City in the process as well, eliminating Spurs too. We are just giant killers at the moment. And then in the Europa League, it was our debut stint in Europe. We have a final up against Tottenham Hotspur, and I'm definitely looking to play the Europa League. We'll simulate the FA Cup. We're simulating this final up against Manchester United at Wembley for the famous old trophy. Can we do it? And we've somehow snatched it there. Lazaro and Varon, the two goal scorers, the two heroes. However, we hold on and we are FA Cup champions. That is the Brazilians' first ever pieces of silverware here, six seasons in. Before we dive headfirst into the Europa League final, this is one final look at our players here, our top performers. And it was Gabriel Varon, definitely the hero of this side throughout the simulations. 35 goals and 11 assists. Pelio in there with 31 goals and 14 assists now maxed out at 99 overall. It was 60 appearances for Caio Jorge with 29 goals and 15 assists in there as well. Tales Magno now hitting that 96 overall. 17 goals and 8 assists. And then Lazaro, 12 goals and 7. Kuto from right back continues to perform. 10 goals and 3 assists. Daniel Cabral as well with 7 goals and 11 assists from central defensive midfield. And then Patrick finally hits that 90 range at a 92 overall. 6 goals and 5 assists for the left back. Let's just say the Brazilians are worth a pretty penny and they've developed into absolute gods right here. That is how we'll be lining up. Pelio to lead the lads out. Let's go and get this Europa League trophy. So they've done it in the FA Cup final only a few days ago and the fans have traveled down in their numbers. Look at that beautiful Tifo. We're up against English opposition again in Tottenham Hotspur. So hopefully they can bottle another European final right here. That is the trophy we're fighting for and the Brazilians are up to the task today. It is the Europa League final and I cannot wait to see how the lads perform at their full heights, at their full potential. And this is is basically the best you're gonna get the under 17 squad they've started small and now they've developed into world-class talents here so let's see how they play it is Jorge to kick us off but on with a massive interception the number seven is getting absolutely harassed by Harry Kane at the back and Cabral loses out but it will be Patrick to win it back Manio our ever-present dynamic attacker will cut back inside into the middle there is someone waiting Vidon was so close to getting the opener we're still gonna have it here and now we're gonna head that on and unfortunately again we need Manio's height in this situation the corners are gonna be tough Manio with the little header and it's gone on back to Manio off the goalkeeper Manio gets it finally after he was the man to win the header it somehow find himself back at the number 11's feet and he buries it after Strakosha made a decent save, Forest Green Rovers won, Spurs nil in the Europa League final. The Afro does the job at the end of the day. It was a bit of a deflection in there as well. We might need a second replay on that. I don't even know what even happened here. It looks like it was going off target and it looks like it came off Sanchez in that situation. Nevertheless, it's Manio to open the scoring here. 1-0 to the Brazilian boys. Now, can we get a second before half time? That would rattle the North London outfit. Now, Pelio back to Jorge. Pelio again. Can Pelio find that ball in? He will. And now it's Jorge all alone. Oh, so close to Rakosha. Another go. It's deflected. Cabral with a massive intervention there in Dombele and Cabral of having a war in midfield at the moment. Oh, it was Cabral to win it, but we've given it away. And it was a physical battle. Now Pelio wins it back 
We see the run of Gabriel Veron, the number seven. What can he do here? He'll try to go for the shot. He tried going for glory, but he's just had that one off target. But still proving to be a threat here. And the equaliser could be not too far away. Harry Kane finds its way into Sessegnon. How did I know? It's the English connection with Kane and Sessegnon. It was the run through. We couldn't track it. And Spurs have their equaliser here in the 55th minute. Over the top into Verón. Verón might get there first. You know, Verón's got the pace. And can he find someone in the middle? We've got the runners. Verón back over to Pelio. Pelio, 99 overall. And he still misses the number 10. Now, finds its way through to Harry Kane. He might have a shot, you know, Veron back on defense. We're on Struggle Street at the moment. And it's back to Harry Kane. He's going to go for the shot. It's going to be a goal. And it's just gone wide. Can we ride the storm? We will. We'll weather through it. And Lazaro wins it back. Cabral over to Jorge Pelio. That is a nice little run from. It is, I don't even know who that is. Lazaro gets stopped. Now Lazaro back to Pelio. The cheeky little back heel. Manio with the Ronaldo chop. Oh, that is sensational. From the man with the afro, we scored both of our goals. And the number 11 from the left wing made that massive run. And he puts us into the lead right there. Lazaro just somehow made his way through. And it was the quick little Ronaldo chop, the little flick that put him past the defender. Had a clear shot at goal. And it was a finesse shot into that bottom right-hand corner. Unstoppable. It's a Europa League final double for Manio. And he seems to be the hero here for this Brazilian squad. We'll latch it on to Lazaro. And he's got a few runners here. The number 20 will find Jorge back to Lazaro. He deserves a goal tonight. Lazaro tries to go for it. And it will be a penalty. That is a soft one. But Spurs give it away. And now we have the chance to kill the game off once and for all. It is Jorge stepping up. But I think Lazaro deserves that one. And let's see what the number 20 can do here. Into the bottom right-hand corner. Surely he can kill the game off. And there we go. The number 20 gets the third. And that is the one to double our advantage here. The Brazilian boy is celebrating. And they might as well be European champions as well. Slotted into that bottom right-hand corner. No issues about it. Don't tell me a fourth is on the horizon. It's Cabral now really sprung into action in the later stages of this game. Hot hair. Goes for it, Stakosha with a massive save. Searching for the fourth, they're hungry. And Cabral makes his way through. Over to Jorge, the number nine can finish off tonight with a goal and Strakosha still keeps it at 3-1. We are now European champions with the under 17 Brazilian Wonder Kids squad. What a night, what a game. And what a performance from especially Manio in there with two goals. We were in deep waters in that game. And we finally dug ourselves out of it. Forest Green Rovers, European champions. They also won the FA Cup a few days earlier. Second in the Premier League. It was the most successful season yet. The Under-17 World Cup Brazilians have done it here. Not only in real life, but also in FIFA 20 career mode. They've got a bright future ahead of them. And I can't wait to see them develop into world-class players one day in the future. Just like they've done here. That is going to be the end of it. So if you did enjoy, make sure to smack the like button down below. Hit subscribe and turn on notifications for more FIFA 20 career mode content. Follow me on Twitter. The link is in the description. Also, comment down below who are your favorite Brazilian Wonder Kids from the squad. I have been BCHD. Hopefully, you have a wonderful day. I'll catch you all on the very next video.